what is up youtube fam how the heck are you doing hope you're doing well chug along through the work week man i am back with a lot of stuff that's going on right now i kind of want to do a pulse check and, and touch base and kind of get caught up on on what's going on in the industry and, and and what's went on recently because oh man hardware software all sorts of good stuff coming out hardware wise now i've been saying this for a long time okay and that was how excited I was for the quad core i3 coffee lake chips. And boy, they did not disappoint. Now this was of course a direct response to the Ryzen 3 quad core lineup that brought us, you know, a good budget quad core chip again. Not this two threads with, with hyper threading and, and all that other crap. Now I've only gotten my hands on one guy's benchmarks. So as soon as some more data is out, we'll be diving much deeper into both the 8100 and the 8350K, which is a very interesting chip to say the least. It, it reminds me of the good old Core 2 quad days, you know, where you could like buy a cheap CPU and just overclock the living heck out of it and have performance way above and beyond what you actually paid for. And boy. I'm blown away by the early benchmark numbers I'm seeing with this chip. I mean, th there were the rumors were true. Okay, and that was the 8350K beating the 7700K in certain gaming benchmarks. Yeah, that's right. It's beating one of the greatest gaming chips ever to come from Intel, the flagship gaming CPU, the 7700K. And it, I'm blown away that this 8350K i3 chip has the horsepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it in certain benchmarks. And we'll talk about that more. I think it's just insane. Now, there's pros and cons with this, with this chip, and we're going to have a whole video talking about the i3 Coffee Lakes specifically. And there's great performing Coffee Lake chips all over throughout the whole release. I'm really loving it. I mean, we now have a six core i5. You know, we have six core mainstream processors, okay? And I really like both the i5 chips too. And, and then of course you get the 8700K. It's a great chip, even better. Um, the, these things are gonna suck a lot of juice though. They're gonna produce a lot of heat. So we'll kind of get into the caveats and, and discuss it more in the future. So now on the GPU side of things, we got the 1070 Ti. You heard me talking about it when comparing the Vega 56, said it was kind of akin to a 1070 Ti if there was such a thing, and there's gonna be such a thing. And, and people are scratching their heads, wondering like, what are they doing? You know, like they got the 1080, they got the 1080 Ti, 1070, like, like how does this fit in? Like, what, what are they thinking? I'll tell you what, I think it's hilarious. I know exactly what NVIDIA is doing with this launch, and it is pure savage stuff, okay? <laughs> uh, we're going to have a video specifically on that. I'm going to share my insight, and you guys are going to love it, okay? Uh, I think it's it's hey, it's a cutthroat world out there in, in hardware. You know, it always has. Uh, and also, I heard, I mean, I've been talking with a, a different different circle of people, okay? And I heard some absolutely crazy rumors about the future of graphics cards and, and specifically the future of SLI. And we're talking a couple generations ahead, but it's going to blow your mind. And you say, like, Angel, how can, how can you even know that? It's just a rumor. That's stupid. Well, hey, re remember now, NVIDIA is spending a lot of money on research and development right now. You know, they're doing a lot of cool stuff with the autonomous car development and the brains inside those chips, like the, the Tesla type stuff, you know. Um, so keep in mind, you know, they're 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 thinking ahead and they're pushing themselves. And and that's it's kind of like a, a race car technology, like Formula One stuff on race day. They have all this technology and that stuff slowly trickles down into your normal vehicles. And, and this is basically the same way, you know. Um, so keep that in mind, okay? They're thinking ahead. Uh, all the while, we got Team Red. They're producing the Vega 20 GPUs right now. Now remember the uh, RX Vega 56 and 64. Those were the Vega 10 GPUs. 
Switching gears to gaming now, man, it's that time of year, fall releases, there's so much stuff going on, the summer drought is done, it was rough, okay, listen to all these games coming out, okay, and these are coming out soon, next, next couple months, okay, Battlefront 2, Destiny 2 PC release, Snore, Mario Odyssey, the new Assassin's Creed, the next Call of Duty World War II game. We got the new Wolfenstein, which I'm very excited about. The new South Park, which is, uh, I'm sure, just more of a great thing. L.A. Noir, uh, the new Evil Within, Need for Speed, Dead Rising. And this is the kind of stuff off the top of my head. Oh, and last but not least, the expansion nobody asked for. Steep, Road to the Olympics. <laughs> Obviously, I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. But the, the sad thing is, I bet most of you haven't even heard about that game. You'd be spent like a zillion dollars on it. Listen, snow like game developers out there, if, if you want to touch on the, the snowboarding stuff, okay, just give me a next generation or even a remake of Cool Borders 2. I'll be happy. The world will be happy with the remade Cool Borders 2. I'm sure that's going to happen the same time the, the SOCOM remaster happens. Um, also, man, we're going to have to talk about loot boxes and microtransactions. I know it's a dead horse. Everybody's talking about it. It's not very compelling stuff, but, um, what I want to know, I, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some journalism here. I, I want to see the numbers. Okay. I want to see if, if companies really need to have loot boxes and microtransactions. Like, do they have to invest in this to keep the ecosystem going? Uh, everybody says game budgets are, are just huge and sometimes it's just the publisher forcing the developers to do it I'm gonna look at the numbers. They're out there uh, You know, and, and I want to find out if they're actually necessary or if it's purely predatory anti-consumer crap I'm gonna try to give them the benefit of the doubt I mean, I already got my thoughts going into that, but we're gonna look at some numbers and, and I'll share that with you guys and uh, hey of course, we got the Xbox One X. Uh, you know, I, I don't focus on console stuff too much, but I will have a look at, you know, when they re release new consoles. And uh, Xbox One X coming soon, releasing like right on my birthday. It's releasing on November 7th. So, you know, uh, if you guys maybe want to buy me a present for my birthday, that's on the same day as the Xbox One X release, please, for the love of God, do not buy me that. But hey, we're, we're going to talk about it, though. You better believe we're going to talk about it. But guys, that is it for now. Please stay tuned. I'll be pumping stuff out a lot more now. I, I don't have to worry about the audio. It's it's and it's going to get better from here. I, I hope you like the new audio improvements. Um, it was horrible. I was struggling with it. It was it was really tough, um, but I learned a lot. We'll share that with you guys. And uh, hey, if, hey, if you want some cringe worthy stuff, if you're new to the channel, go check out some of the older videos. <laughs> no, I actually don't better yet. Do not check out my older videos. But guys, that is it for now. You guys be good. Take care. Keep working hard. I'll see you on the next one.